Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. As I, as I said yesterday on the main stage, I blew into Atlanta in 1982 with my mattresses tied to the roof of a buy here, pay here car. I was broke, I was divorced, I was upset, depressed. It, you can look for the adjectives and it, it was not a, a great time in my life. But I made two decisions as I drove up I-75 I that night. Here I was, 35 years old, starting over again, again. This wasn't the first time. And I had the mattresses tied to the roof all wrapped up in plastic. And here I was, like I say, 35 years old, starting over again, again. And as I drove up I-75, I made two decisions that night. Decision number one, I will be a success. Ladies, gentlemen, success is a conscious, top-of-the-mind thought process. Success is a decision that you make. Success is a point in your life when you achieve focus and intensity. Now, I am not saying that people in this room are not successful. You certainly are successful. But the challenge is, are you as successful as you should be, could be, deserve to be, capable of being, or are you operating at a level below your capacity? Now, this is not a tent revival. You don't need to stand up and faint or cry or confess or anything like that. But you've got to just tell yourself, that man is telling me the truth. Success is a conscious decision. And nobody in this room is doing the best job you could possibly do. And you should celebrate that. Because the moment you start to believe you're doing the best job you could possibly do, you're getting all you can get. There's not a man or woman in this room that doesn't need to say, hey, there's more than I now have, more than I now am, more than I'm now doing, more than I'm now getting. Second decision. I'll study my profession as surely as if I were studying for a master's degree in any other profession. I will become a student of the auto industry. And on the main stage yesterday, we remarked that I was 65 years of age. But I have moved with the trends. I have studied my profession as surely as if I were studying for a master's degree in any other profession. This is what we do. And if this is what we do, let's be the best there is at what we do. And that's something that I, I tell every audience. This story starts out almost every speech. Be a success. I blew into town with less than $400 to my name. I was a millionaire within five years. But I started out working in these dealerships, doing what you do. And I studied my profession. Part of our profession that I'm going to be talking about today is working the deal. Well, that's old school. There is no old school and new school. It's just what is. I've seen these two armies in the car business lately. We're going to have the techies and the old school guys, and we're going to fight each other. Now, quit it. It all works in harmony. It all works together. And that's the one thing I have learned knowing both sides of the picture. Most dealerships today are pitiful with the profitability we're making on automobiles. Because we have lost in the car business the philosophy that full price is a fair price. We've lost the philosophy that our cars are worth the money. Excuse me. Our cars are only marked up 6 to 8%. Furniture and jewelry all over this state are marked up 300%. But I have never seen Dan Rather and a camera crew invade a jewelry store or a furniture store. It's always us. And they always might manage to find the worst of us. They always manage to find the worst, crookedest car dealer in the world. I mean, we have integrity. This industry has great integrity. And I get offended, personally, when somebody says otherwise. When somebody talks about car people, I'm the first to defend us. We have been upgrading the standard of what we offer the public for the 36 years I've been kicking around. Everything I talk about today is going to be high integrity. You don't need to lie, cheat, sneak, deceive, or misrepresent to sell automobiles and make a high profit. <coughs> 
But currently, I'm consulting 98 corporations that own car dealerships. Some of them own one, some of them own 30. But the profitability in those dealerships, for the most part, is north of $3,000 a car, front and back. I went into a dealership recently in Burton, Ohio. Now, let me describe Burton, Ohio. We're talking serious-ass Mayberry, right? <laughs> I mean, we're talking, we're talking an Amish community. We're talking, we're talking, it's on the lake. I mean, it's just about 40 miles southeast of, of uh, Cleveland. And they got this little dealership that sells General Motors. They have a Kia dealership, and they have a Ford dealership. And collectively, two years ago, they were selling about 100 cars a month. With very small adjustments, we've increased that dealership a million dollars annually. How's your math? Pretty good. Is that pretty good? But you know what? That's not uncommon. There are certain philosophies and processes. Average people with great processes can yield incredible results. You don't need superstars. You don't need prima donnas. As a matter of fact, I fire those people. I stopped being a professional salesman a long time ago. I am a professional manager. And my mindset comes from being a manager. Matthew, sitting here in the front row, can tell you about my roots when I was with Dyer and Dyer Volvo when we went from 40 units a month to 850 units a month in less than a year and a half. Am I telling a lie? I wasn't in charge, I was just one of the managers, but I was in the game. I was part of it. So my mindset is a manager's mindset. And every deal starts with the management, every deal starts with all the money. You can't do that on the internet because maybe your internet pricing is all the money. One thing I've done recently that I just get a kick out of, when an internet consumer that we converted to a phone call says, is that your best price? I mean, you've already given them your pants down internet price and they still want your, your best price. You get any of that? The answer is, oh, absolutely not. Certainly no, 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 it's not our best price by any means. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a much better price available. That's the, the lowest price we're allowed to discuss on the telephone or legally put in print. <laughs> yeah, that's the lowest price you're going to get on the telephone or in print, but there certainly is a better price available. Because if you don't do that, you're going to be doing the limbo, and you're going to continue to go lower every, every round, correct? You know, value. In the car business, one thing I have found out, I'm going to talk about the walk-in consumer. Because we are seeing more walk-in consumers than ever in history. The percentages are moving up, not down. And, the reason, and that, that's every major statistician, J.D. Power, I don't care who you're looking at, they're researching on the internet, but they're not contacting you, they're showing up. How many people have experienced a trend moving in that direction? Quite a few of us. They're just showing up. Now, they've already pre-selected your dealership. You've got to remember, 84% of consumers shop first when they want to buy the car. 84% of consumers, that statistic hasn't changed in 30 years. When somebody says, this is the first place I've shopped, that is a very good thing. <laughs> it's that second dealer that generally get, gets the shaft. <laughs> they either buy at the first dealer, they buy at the third dealer, nobody buys at the middle dealer. I mean, it's just all, the statistic is single digits. But the point is, I have a philosophy that every, every deal is, is fair. We don't always get all the money, but we always go for it. 100% of the time, and if, if the internet pricing is what they came in, that is all the money. But are you in a dealership, sir? Yeah. No. What do you sell? Toyota. Toyota. Now, there's a really poured out. Honda and Toyota, man, you guys just slit each other's throats. True? True. <laughs> if I was to examine the, the deals that were physically worked in your dealership last month, if I was to pull 100 deal folders and just go through them and look at the worksheets and the F&I sheets, and how many of those deals started at all the money? Not many. You know why they started at less than all the money? Because the deal was contaminated by a salesperson before the manager ever touched the deal. 
True or false, guys? Most deals that are blown are blown because of inappropriate behavior of car sales person. True? Did I say they're evil? Did I say they're malicious? No, I just said they screw up deals. Number one thing that screws up deals, and this could be you I'm talking to, is people are afraid of the money. We're afraid of the money. If you can't present figures to a consumer with confidence in your facial expression, your body language, and your voice, you cannot win. You ever see RoboCop? Remember when you were a little kid, RoboCop had that eyeball? Now you could see through his eyeball. That was kind of cool. I mean, he had little grids and shit in it, right? You could see through RoboCop's eyeballs. And when RoboCop looked at you, he went, Shh, and he made assessments on everything about you. Consumers do that. Sir, write me a check for $5,000. Some people really don't expect it. <laughs> they make that decision that quick. They're making assessments about you. You have to have confidence. On the telephone, can you have confidence on the telephone? Can they, can they find lack of confidence on the telephone? Absolutely. By the way, when you're on the phone, stand up. Walk around. Pace. Headset. Both hands free. You have less energy and you, you sound less friendly when you are sitting down. I make 100 phone calls a day when I'm in my office. I am a one-man BDC and I'm telling you the truth. And that's 100 contacts. I mean, I'm getting these people. How do you do 100 contacts a day? You have organization, folks. Productivity is born of organization. You sharpen your axe before you cut down a tree. <laughs> that makes sense? So many people are busy chopping you forget to sharpen the axe if that makes sense. Every deal starts at the desk. Every deal starts at all the money. Every deal starts at everything. The number one reason we're not able to do that is because your salesperson or you personally have overqualified the consumer. You're finding, how many of your salespeople show up and you're just getting some deals now, right? Yeah. You know, you're transitioning. Hey, Joel, let me tell you why we can't make shit on this deal. Let me tell you where they've been, what they know, who they, Kelly, Blue Book, Edmonds.com, puke all over your desk. <laughs> right? How many sales, is that true? How many sales people up there arguing with the manager not to make a profit? Because they have already committed to the consumer. Managers are supposed to manage by walking around. Managers are supposed to be in motion like sharks that never stop swimming. Managers are supposed to have a quality I call hyper-awareness, where they're aware of every deal in progress as that deal is happening. From handshake to tail lights, a car deal has a heartbeat. It has a rhythm. It has a pulse. True or false? True. You got two kinds of salespeople in most dealerships, track stars and tour guides. <laughs> track stars going to be at the desk in 15 minutes trying to work a $40,000 car deal. Tour guide just marches people's ass around until they leave. <laughs> Never gets around to closing the deal. You, you, got, you got both? The heartbeat of a deal, that's management's responsibility. Management should know how long these people have been involved. It's a relationship business. And most of your people, and so maybe you, and, and, is it difficult? Oh, yeah, it's difficult. In Atlanta, Georgia, where I live, you wouldn't believe. C customers ask salesmen, what's your best price? No shit, they do. Most dangerous moment in a car sale, what's your best price? Whatever you do or say next will determine what happens, right? My best price, no problem. That's important to you. We'll do business. Never lost a deal of price was the issue, sir. Our policy at Wonderful Toyota is not only to get you the best price. Our policy is to get you all of the information you need to make an intelligent and informed decision. Our policy is to give you everything. The price, I'm going to give it all to you. Price, trade, monthly payment amount, lease payment, interest rate. What do you want to know? I'll give it all to you. We're going to hold nothing back. But we do require you select and drive a car before we discuss figures. Even in internet sales, we have to get that consumer to drive. Because you're dealing with people who are solely in their logical mind. And to get the customer into their visual and emotional mind, you need to get them to experience the car. Locate deals, your best profit. Locate deals, your best profit, because the customer never experienced the vehicle. Kathy, are you a mom? No, I'm not. Are you a mom? 
And how old's your youngest? 19. 19. Who, who, I wouldn't guess that. Okay. 19 years ago, I'm assuming you were in the hospital. Uh, yeah. Baby wasn't born in like the elevator or the taxi cab. You made it all the way to the delivery room, right? And the nurse said, you ready to go home? You said, yeah. And the nurse said, great, let me go down in the nursery and get you a baby. Or did you want like a specific baby? Yeah, you had one in mind. Women are like that. <laughs> Women bond with their children. Consumers bond with specific cars. The problem with, with the Internet, it's got us selling generic cars that they have no emotional involvement with. Am I making good sense? Yeah. The quicker you get that customer on a specific unit, there might be six blue ones, but the only the center one is their baby in their mind. Am I making good sense? The driving of the car is when the consumer goes from logical to visual, when they go from logical to emotional. And that's when you start making a profit. You've got to have a relationship. They don't want to like us. They don't want to like you. How many times have I told a brand new Greenpeace salesman, why did we hire you? Because we suspected you had a personality. But you don't waste any of that shit on real customers. You're too busy selling deals and you're not selling relationships. It's not about the deal. We're talking deal. What's your best price? We're overqualifying these people. This, let me show you how most of you are working deals. Let me show you most of your, of your dealerships. Now, this is the physical dealership. We've got full list, and we've got cost. And there's only about 6 to 8% markup between invoice and MSRP on most, most cars. And the customer comes in and the, the salesperson, or even you, says, hi, welcome to the dealership. Well, what's your budget? <laughs> Tell me some stupid ass number you made up on the exit ramp. <laughs> Tell me a number that has no correlation to the car you're looking at. Tell me a number we can fight over and I can blow you out over and a number you're never gonna get. I've been selling cars 36 years. I have set some world records in our industry. I have never, in 36 years, asked a consumer what they wanted to pay that they told me a number that would actually buy the car. Why am I asking a customer what they want to pay when I know it's going to get a stupid number that won't work? Stop overqualifying the people on what they want and start qualifying them on what they're able. Have you ever had a deal that you put in the F&I office that you made no money on? And then the F&I manager bumped them $50 a month more? And you thought you had all the money? Who's ever had a deal like that? Any of you? <laughs> Why was F&I able to bump the people $50 a month when you thought you had it all? They were operating with the facts and the figures. They had the customer's credit bureau. <coughs> they knew, they, knew they, could, they were credit worthy enough to buy the car. And they knew they had income enough to afford it. Income and credit worthiness are the only two real qualifiers as to whether they're on the right car or not. What they want to pay is immaterial. Every consumer shopping you on the phone, on the internet, in person, they've got two figures. What we're going to tell the salesperson and the if we had to figure. And you're never going to hear the if we had to figure, right? So you say, well, what's your budget? You've only got 6 to 8% from top to bottom, and, they, and it's a $30,000 car, and that consumer says, I need $300 a month. And what you do then is you, we're going to bump them. You bump them two or three times to make no money because you made them tell you a stupid number. I want myself to say, sir, we have Mr. James Ziegler on the desk today, a guest manager from Atlanta, Georgia. And when you see his numbers, you're going to be excited. <laughs> You'll be jumping up and down. <laughs> Usually they look at my numbers and I get the whistling goddams. They just go, yeah, damn. <laughs> Which seems to be the problem. Always go for all the money. Don't, don't, don't get the impression that all the money is cheating anybody. There's not enough profit in a car deal to cheat anybody. And we have to think of our... We have to think differently. Well, show me your invoice. Show me your spouse's underwear. <laughs> Excuse me. 
If they ever hung the first person who showed a consumer our invoice, I personally would kick the chair out. <laughs> I would participate in that lynching because it's bad business. Because I'm going to open up that deal at 600, which is the right number. It's not, I'm not shocking these people, but I'm hitting them at the right number, and we're going to work down. Well, the consumer blurted it out, I need $300 a month. What does your salesperson do knowing a $30,000 car won't sell for $300 a month? What's your salesperson usually say next? Let me see what I can do. Oh, or they say, we need a cheaper car. And they start negotiating on the parking lot. I teach salespeople, write them, don't fight them. Get the consumer on paper. If I get a consumer, or, or get them into the CRM system, I get a consumer in the showroom, I generally at least get a write-up. Deals are blown outside, they're not blown inside. And managers need to touch every customer often and early and never meet the customer the first time when you're in combat. <coughs> and if the customer says, well, what do you think I am, an idiot? Well, sir, if you were, I did not want to miss an opportunity. <laughs> no. that, was, that was humor. That was me joking, okay? <laughs> Some of you I saw actually write that down, don't <laughs> That was humor, <laughs> okay. So what I want my salesman to do is to come to the, the management to get the first set of figures. Management starts the deal. Now what I found is you got brand new salespeople that are not yet fully trained and I don't know, when I got into business a couple years ago, <coughs> they put me in a room with a bunch of Jackie B. Cooper beta tapes and told me don't come out till you are fully trained. And you know most car dealerships today do that, we don't retrain our salespeople. We train them one time when we first hire them and we never get back to training them again. Is this true or false? One training is supposed to last a lifetime. I've had to retrain myself continually because this business is evolving and changing. Have to learn new things. And then you got the old car dogs. I mean, you got the old car dogs that are set in their ways and resisting change. They don't want change. Anybody have any, any of that scenario happen in your, in your... The old car dogs don't want change. And some of you techies disrespect the car dogs, too. I mean, let's, let's put it on both, both ends of the spectrum. I've, I've been trying to get these two opposing armies together forever because we need each other. And the old car dogs, I, I see a young sales manager, look, I want you to say this and say that. But if they do this, you do that. And if they do this, you do that. But if they do this, you say that. And if they say that, you say that. Got it? <laughs> He said we need a cheaper car. That's that, that's that salesman's whole interpretation of all that brilliant shit he told him to say. We need a cheaper car. They're not listening to you. They have their own idea. Matter of fact, they probably already committed to the customer what they can get you to do. <laughs> True or false? There's a lot of salespersonship, is salespersonship socially acceptable, salespersonship going on here, but it's all being aimed at the manager. It's not being aimed at the consumer. And does anybody here work with a market that has customers that are credit challenged? Where are you at? Where are you? Kingsville, Texas. Oh man, you got some credit challenges there, right? A little bit. We used to call these people derogatory names. I mean, bogues, drecks, roaches, credit criminals, get me done. We, we don't do that anymore. We are so socially PC. Credit challenged, equity impaired. <laughs> we are so nice. We, I used to call these people bogues, I'll be honest. Bogues, derivative word, bogus. Credit bearing machine, bogometer. You know, there's whole vocabulary went with that. Uh-oh, I'm smelling some bogusicity here. This guy's pegging the needle on my bogometer. You know, there's a whole vocabulary went with that. Do bogues know who they are? That's one thing you've got to remember about people with bad credit. Stop apologizing to them because they got bad credit. They know who they are. They've received mail about it. 63% of consumers have a credit score under 600. 63% of consumers have bad credit. 
And like I say, they know who they are, and we're in the entitlement generation. Look, sir, I appreciate you got yourself in some credit problems, and I'm trying to help you, but lose that attitude. I personally didn't buy all that shit you didn't pay for. <laughs> Those of you who wrote that down, that was not a word track either. That was, <laughs> that was humor. But the point is, full price is fair. I couldn't get the brand new hires to do it. I couldn't get the old car guys and women to do it. So a couple years ago, I scripted out the worksheet. This was my finest hour of anything I've done. When I scripted out the worksheet, and we got this programmed... You have my permission to, to program this form into your CRM. I release the copyright to you. You've got my permission to use this form. This form is one of the most high profit making worksheets you will ever see in the car business. And like I say, you've got my full permission to use it. Just give me credit for it. Don't, don't say you invented it. But <laughs> yeah, you give me credit for it. You've got my permission to use it. First of all, the upscale intelligent consumer likes this. It looks like it wasn't something you just threw together for them. It doesn't look like, like we're going to draw four big squares. <laughs> That's pretty trustworthy. No, it's not a four square, but it works similar. It's got all the script written out. The salesperson says, Mr. Customer, let me go to my manager and get us a proposal. The salesperson comes up to the sales desk where I am. Step number one, I'm going to audit the worksheet. I'm going to be sure they got all the information it takes to do a deal. I was in a Nissan dealership in Shreveport, Louisiana not long ago. I had desked a $7,800 front and back deal on a Nissan program Altima. We'd take those, wouldn't we? And we get the papers, we get the worksheet signed, father and a daughter, and the salesperson goes into slow motion, stupid mode. <laughs> when you get a deal, do you have salespeople go into the slow motion, stupid? Well, I got to go get some numbers off the car. I have to go get another form. 30 minutes later, these people are not in the F&I office and dad's saying, we might be moving a little too fast here. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> and I held that deal together, but... One thing I'm trying to achieve in car dealerships is we got, when we got a customer commit to a deal, I need to have enough information to have that deal in the F&I office in less than 10 minutes. Not sitting on the couch hoping to get in the F&I office. I want them in the F&I office in less than 10 minutes. The shot clock is running. The F&I office is the basket. Does that make good sense? I want them in there. So step number one, audit the worksheet. Or if it's in the CRM system, be sure they got all the information in the CRM system. Step number two, ask the salesperson questions. All the decision makers here, these people have time to do business. Did they drive the exact car they're buying? Is there trade-in present? I need to know that my salesman knows. Step number three, I'm going to put the numbers on the worksheet. I'm going to give the salesman the numbers. Salesmen do not bring me the numbers. I'm sorry, salespeople are not emotionally equipped to handle their own deals. There has to be a coach that sends in the plays from the outside. Even me, I, I, if I'm working the deal, I need somebody to pencil the figures. Step number four, rehearse the salesman. Make the salesperson say back to you what they're going to say to the customer. Tell me what you're going to tell the customer. Exact words that you're going to tell them. Step number six or five, whatever it is, I'm going to get up off the desk and go listen to them say it. Because they don't always say what you tell them to say. But when they look up and see the, me, the manager, standing there, they're going to do it. So the salesman comes up to the sales desk. And I ask questions. And hopefully they haven't messed up the deal too badly. I got A, B, C, D, and E. A is the price. $32,000 car, $2,000 value package, $3,000 rebate, $29,000 adjusted. I'll explain that in a minute. 
I got a trade in coming in 16,111 to 17,456. Payoff on that trade in is 16,000. Down payment, 5891. I don't care if it's, it's the internet department, the traditional sales department, no matter how you do business, down payment is the key to profitability, and you're bad at it. Average dealership in this country is getting less than $250 true cash per finance deal. Average dealership I'm working with is above $2,000 per finance deal. Cash per finance deal is the key to being profitable. The consumer can attack you everywhere. I mean, we are, we are so weak. I mean, I cannot believe people say we take advantage of consumers. <laughs> you know how much information they come in with. We are totally disarmed. But the one figure that that consumer is not privileged to, the one figure that I have the advantage is the down payment. So I put the figures on the worksheet. I rehearse the salesman. Say back to me what you're going to say to the customer. And my salesman says to the customer, Mr. Customer, the market value of the vehicle you're purchasing is $32,000. Look at the psychology of that statement. The market value of what? The vehicle you are purchasing. We're so afraid to tell these people they're buying a car, we just hope we sneak up on them and they give up. No, the market value of the vehicle you're purchasing is $32,000. That includes a $2,000 value discount package from Ford Motor Company. Ford, General Motors, Nissan, Toyota, Chrysler. They all have value discount packages. Some of them, some of them like on your Armadas, $4,000 value discount package right on the window sticker and nobody ever mentioned it to the consumer. We got a $4,000 factory <clears throat> discount. I want my salesman to do a little happy dance. Sir, this is a special promotional unit for Toyota. It's been discounted $2,500. You got one of the promo units. It's got a factory discount. I want them to do a little excited dance on the, they're not doing it. So I put it right on the worksheet. Sir, that would be $34,000 that we not discounted that. We have a $3,000 cash back rebate. Now, you've known me for a long time. Did you, did you know I was a rap artist? <laughs> I can believe it. I am the greatest white boy rapper since Vanilla Ice invented rap. <laughs> now, you're not going to get the low rate. You're going to take the rebate. Okay, I'll stick to whatever other profession I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that pretty pitiful? Yeah. You're not going to get the low rate. You're going to take the rebate. Stop putting these people on 0% if the rebate's the other option. If it's a rebate or a 0 0.19, or, they're not going to get the low rate. We're going to put them on the rebate. We need the rebate in the deal to make profitability. With a high percentage of people that are upside down and have damaged credit, the rebate works in every, it works for us and it works for them. We do not do the low rate, we do the rebate. And by the way, if that customer comes in retail, I don't want that salesman to convert that customer to a lease without my permission. We might lease them, but don't you convert them to a lease if they think they're buying a car retail. Now, sir, that gives us adjusted sale price of $29,000. Our professional buyers have looked at your car, and we're willing to buy your car as part of this deal somewhere between $16,111 and $17,456. That's based on the most and the least that cars like yours have been bought and sold for in this market. Not based on a book, not based on a Los Angeles, California website. It's based, not based on my manager's opinion or an auction. It's based on the high and the low that cars like yours have actually been bought and sold for. We'll be paying off your old car up to 16000 Your old car, the one you came in in. Now, Mr. Customer, I'm sure, I'm sure you're aware, and listen to this word tracking. I'm sure you're aware the banks in this market, including... Uh, Ford Credit would like to see as much as 20% cash down payment for preferred and premium financial programs. So we'd like to get a check from you today for $5,891. The secret to profitability is getting the down payment. And the secret to getting the down payment is never ask a customer how much they have. Never ask a consumer, well, how much are we thinking about putting down? The answer is always going to be nothing, my trade. No, Mr. Customer, as you know, 
When I say, as you know, does that imply you're supposed to know whatever I'm about to say? And if you appear you don't know it, you'll appear to be a dumbass? Mm -hmm. Right. As you know. Oh, I know it, whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, as you know, different people qualify for different financial programs. Is that a true or false statement? True. It depends on your personal credit and the amount of your down payment. The amount of your down payment, sir. Most banks would like to see 20% down for preferred and premium financial programs. We need to say that with confidence and not be afraid of that number. And by the way, that's the first time the consumer has even been mentioned down payment. When it shows up on the worksheet, the banks would like to see, I didn't say the banks require, the banks would like to see 20% down for preferred and premium financial programs. I don't care, if you bring a customer in, what percentage of consumers don't buy the car they thought they were going to buy before they left the house? 70 or 80% of consumers switch, switch cars, right? Don't worry about what you told them on the internet. They're going to probably switch themselves, not us switch them. They're going to switch themselves. I had nine Escalades since 2000. Now, I decided a couple months ago to get something else. I had seven Corvettes and nine Escalades. I'm still in my Corvettes, but I decided to get something other than an Escalade, and I do have some contracts with General Motors. We go to the General Motors dealer, and I have already researched on the internet, I am going to buy an Acadia Denali GMC. I'm going to get a GMC Denali Acadia. Today, I'm the proud owner of a Buick Enclave. <laughs> I switched myself, and I'm a hardened car guy. These people aren't locked in until you lock them in. And we, we lock them in so much to a specific unit, then... Your salesman, we can get you exactly what you want. As soon as you tell them that, man, you have blown the deal. Sir, the banks would like to see 20% down for preferred and premium financial programs, so we'd like to get a check from you for $58.91. And you might get a reaction from the consumer on that down payment. <laughs> They're not going to throw a chair at you. They're not going to get angry at you because nobody has talked down payment until this moment. First, they've heard of it. But, now you knew I was a rap artist. <laughs> Did you know I was a mind reader? Watch. And that'll give you a, a price of 29000 29000 I'm not paying 29000 That's a consumer thinking. And we'd like to buy your trade somewhere between 16111 and 17456 17456 I'm not taking that for my trade. I'm not taking 17456 for my trade, and I'm not paying 29000 for her car. And we'd like to get a down payment check for fifty-eight ninety-one. Twenty-nine thousand. I'm not paying twenty-nine thousand. Seventeen four. I'm not taking that for my trade. Fifty-eight ninety-one. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> about the time that fifty-eight ninety-one shows up, are they thinking about anything but that? Nope. Down payment is the only one area that the consumer has to justify themselves. They make us justify the price, the trade, the payment. Where's the cash down payment? Well, I can't pay six twenty-one. What do ninety-nine percent of the salesmen say? The very next words out of their mouth. What can you pay? You're right, sir. These numbers are bullshit. Manager is jerking you around. What can you really pay? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what they're saying? Our salespeople go for the counter offer in ten seconds, and you wonder why you're not holding profitability. You're going for the counter offer so fast. <coughs> You can't make a profit. Your salesman says, sir, that's a very normal payment in today's market. Most of these little Honda Fits are going for that. <laughs> very, very normal payment. Now, sir, that is an accelerated equity situation. I don't care what they... Now, now here's one of my best word tracks, sir. Well, I didn't have a down payment five years ago. Well, sir, five years ago was a different economic America. The banks today operating with federal bailout assistance money want to see an equity position going in. How good a word track is that? Yeah, Isn't that awesome? The banks today operating with federal bailout assistance would like to see an advanced equity position going in. The whole landscape has changed. I, I haven't got that kind of down payment. Now here's the best, listen to this word track. Do I want this customer to be upset? No. I want to get their attention, I've got their attention. Now, now I'm going to just calm them right down. Watch this. 
I can't pay 5891 down payment. Sir, the banks do not require 20% down. Ideally, that's what they would like to see for the best financial situations. But they don't require 20% down. Now listen to my next words. I can certainly get you financed with less down payment. How strong was that word track? I can certainly get you financed with less down payment as opposed to no down payment. Every dealership that we are doing the, the big numbers, we're getting the big down payments. And the way we're getting the big down payments is not by not asking the consumer what they want to put down. We're telling them what they need, and it's, the worksheet is when that is being introduced for the first time. Your down payment, they need to think about that. Upwards of 90% nationally of consumers, depending whether you're using J.D. Power, NADA, or, or CNW research statistics, doesn't matter whose statistics you're using, 90% of consumers or more, number one, have already made brand decision. Number two, are buying based on the monthly payment amount and only the monthly payment amount. They, they don't really care what the price is. I mean, we, we, are, we are so price point conscious, they really don't care. The only reason they think they've got to negotiate on the price and the trades so they get a better financial situation. That's the majority of consumers. That payment and down payment is what matters to them. And we go through all this negotiation and then we have to renegotiate the finance. Let's start out with it. Well, sir, I'm authorized to offer you 60 months, and that would lower your payment at least $30 a month. What fair and reasonable number did you have in mind? Only after I've defended that payment for a little while do I say, sir, what fair and reasonable amount did you have in mind? Now, as a manager, I'm going to say to the consumer, Sir, I'm, I'm Jim Ziegler. I'm, I'm, I'm the, ge the general sales manager here, and is my salesperson doing a good job? She's one of our very best. You know, I'm the guy with all the different color pens, and it appears it's starting to go back and forth. I don't want to do that using my salesman as a messenger to you. Would you mind if I just sat down and finished the deal in one sitting? You heard that word, track? Would you mind if I just sat down and finished the deal? That is one of the strongest T.O. word tracks in the world. Would you mind, terribly if I just sat down and finished the deal, and if a consumer says yes, that's the best T.O. in the world. Would you mind? You ever have a salesman say, look, I, I want your best price. I want your best price right now. I don't want any of that back and forth crap between you and the manager. You ever, you ever heard that before? I don't want any of that back and forth crap between you and the manager. You ever heard that before? Well, sir, are you paying full sticker price for this car? No. Well, then you just created some back and forth crap. <laughs> I was happy with the first number I sent you. You sent my guy back. <laughs> Who started all that? <laughs> Consumers accuse us of starting all that back and forth crap, and every, I've never seen where we started it. <laughs> they're, they're the one always sending my salesman back for another number, no matter what number you send in too, right? You can't go low enough for that consumer not to send the salesman back. <laughs> so, so don't ever think we're starting all that. You know, we don't. So the consumer says, I can pay $450. Now you gotta give them the, the look. $450. And you gotta go, Sir, if you had to, if it was necessary, could you go as high as five hundred? If you had to. This is called the if you had to bump. If you had to, could you go as high as five hundred? Well, sir, I'm pretty confident you're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> Just write it down. Now this is where we lose most of our deals. Sir, if, my, if, if the management will accept that, and we could, you could own this car and say, buy it, own it for $500 a month, you'd own it right now. Well, go see if your manager will do it. No, sir, it's your number. Well, I'm not taking that for my trade. Sir, I'm sure that if we're able to get down as low as $500 a month, these figures will change. Is $500 a month important to you? Yes. If we can structure these figures any way, shape, or form to get down as low as $500 a month, will you own the car? Let's keep them in one place. Okay, if you can get down to $500 a month, I'll own the car. 
Great, write me that check for $58.91. That number there is the most important number in the worksheet. That down payment is the most important figure, whether it's cash or a lease or finance. I went into um, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Mark Heights Chevrolet. I think they're the 10th largest Chevrolet dealer in the country. They work deals 100% trade difference. They don't want any payments on the sales floor. They sell, I don't know, 500 units a month, 400, I don't know, a lot. And I, there's a letter on my website that says, Mr. Ziegler made one visit to our dealership and our gross per, fi per retail deal went up $913 on 500 units. $913 per deal on 500 sales. How's your math? Is that pretty good? You know the only thing I did differently? Now they're working straight trade different, straight figures. Only thing I did differently is I started penciling the down payment on the worksheet. If you're financing with us, I was putting the down payment on the worksheet even on a trade difference deal. And the down payment got to be the focus of the negotiation. Because right now, most of us are negotiating the price, we're negotiating the trade, we're negotiating the payment but we're not making the consumer negotiate the down payment, which is the only area where we have any leverage at all. And to do that, start, start them out with 20% down. Cause, and, I, and I say, Mr. Customer, the banks ideally would like to see 20% down payment. That's what they advertise in the paper when they put an example set of figures in the paper in one of their ads. They use 20% in every bank's example ads. That's what they would like to see. I can cer here's that word track again, I can certainly get you finance with less money down. Now you're familiar with a, a dealership probably not too far from you, the Millennium Group. And it's a lot of those, they had what, 10 people in the seminar you attended with me in New Jersey? Probably, probably about 10 people. Their grosses went up astronomically. This is one of the biggest dealer groups in New York. Dana Ford in Staten Island. I started working with Dana Ford in Staten Island three years ago. They, they were way down, they, I don't know, 40 or 50 out of all the tri-state. <clears throat> now they are number one in the tri-state for Ford. New York, New Jersey, what's the other one? Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, they're now the number one Ford dealer at $3,500 a unit on upwards of 400 units in New York. And once again, I don't know if you've ever been to New York, that could be some pretty tough customers. <laughs> Seriously. I work at Central Avenue Chrysler up there. And, oh, welcome to Central Avenue. Glad you're here. You glad I'm here. <laughs> get, some, get some of that attitude and a salute. That is the key to working the deal. Any, what questions do we have for me? What discussions do we have? Anything, anything? I, I hate it when speakers don't allow any time for, we got about six, seven minutes here. Yes, sir. This is a simple, simple deal, but what do you, what do you ask the customer once you go over the figures? Give me your okay here. Uh, the last thing I want the salesman to say, sir, write me that check. Okay, the salesman says, I haven't got 5891. Let me take this deal out a little farther. That's a good question. Okay, well, sir, how, okay, I never say how much money do you have? I haven't got 5891. Okay, how close to that can you come up with? The banks don't require 20%. I can certainly get you financed with less money down. Ideally, the banks would like to see 20%. How close to 5891 can you come up with? And the consumer says, Well, I got a thousand dollars. I make that face. Thousand dollars. I had a manager who used to whistle at him. His name was Jim Barron. He'd go, thousand dollars. <laughs> And the people said, did he insult me? Thousand dollars. Sir, if you had to, could you go as high as fifteen hundred? Well, if I had to, sir, I'm pretty confident you're gonna have to. And to answer your question, so write me that check for fifteen hundred. Well, if for any reason we don't do business, we're certainly not gonna take your fifteen hundred dollar check. You can't even get in a real estate agent's car without showing them the money. 
Write me that check. We, we have gotten so afraid of the money as an industry. Don't write me that check for $1,500. I had a salesman not long ago. He, he takes my figures into the customer. Sir, I'm sorry. You see the fat ball headed guy with the baseball hat? He's a consultant from Atlanta. Can you come back Thursday? <laughs> yeah, can you come back Thursday? Did I answer your question adequately? Yes, sir. Questions? Discussions? Yeah, Joel? Um, on term financing, you know, customers are locked so much into like 60 months, 72 months. Well, you're going back to my New Jersey seminar, right? Right. I'll show it to you. Okay. The salesman brings me those figures I put on the back of the worksheet. Okay. At 68 months. Now, what did he close at? Four for 500? Yeah. Okay, 511 to 521. Let's move them up a little bit so they think they won. With, what do you have down? 1500? Uh, yeah. 1781.63 cents. You notice none of my numbers ever end in zeros, 25s, or 50s. When, you, when all your numbers conveniently end in zeros, 25s, and 50s, that customer knows you're, you're playing a game. I put 61 cents on the back of my figures, 42 cents. I mean, they end in weird numbers. And the consumer, but what's so weird? 68 months. What you've got to understand, every month, Additional, the customer pays, 80% of that is front side profit. If you close the customer 68 months at $500 as opposed to 60 months still at $500, $4,000 additional money went in that deal. 80% of that is front side gross. You picked up $3,200 front side gross because you picked up eight payments. Start thinking a payment at a time. Well, sir, let's see if we could do it. I got you at 60 months at 300. I can't pay that. Or I, I can't do that. Sir, what if I could get you at 62 months at 300? Oh, I'd do that. Two months at 300, put $600 additional money in the deal. 80% of that's 400. My salesman made $100 commission just for the bump. You follow what I'm saying? Start thinking a payment at a time. Let's see if I can do 61 months. Let me see if I can do 62. Let me see if I can do 63. Don't, you don't have to bump the customer all the way to 72 months from 60 months. You make a lot of money with 61, 62, 63. See, the banks do not only finance even months terms. They will finance anything. The rate sheet <laughs> says up to 60 months, up to 66 months, up to 76 months, 72 months. It doesn't say you have to go exactly 72. You can go 71, 70, 68, 69. Yes, sir? You said earlier, uh, lease versus buy, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you said don't think you can go to lease without staying to buy. Uh, mm -hmm. We keep talking about having a rubber band on a bumper for the two, three years from now. You've got customers coming back to our store. Can you kind of explain your opinion on that? Well, you know, that, that, that concept came around with, with Ford's plan back in the, the 80s, actually. You know, we're going to lease this customer every two years. It didn't work. Because what we know today is that consumers are shopping you at the end of every trade cycle, no matter what you've got them locked into. A 60-month a, a loan is only upside down for four years. You know, it's only upside down for four years if you didn't advance a lot of negative equity into it, you know, if it's just a, even if it's a break-even deal. This is the point, now to answer your question, where me as a manager, I'm going to make a decision. And I do many times put or lease 35 months at 401 to 411 with $812 cash. I want to make a determination. I don't want my salesman converting the customer to a lease. That's because we got salespeople get to be lease fanatics and they're trying to sell the customer the method of payment before they close the car. If that customer came in on a lease, we're going to work the deal as a lease. But if that customer came in thinking retail, I'm going to keep the deal retail. 
because when I do convert it to a lease, I can convert it to a higher profit lease against the higher profit retail figures. Am I making good sense? This is the point where I convert the customer to a lease, and that's a manager's decision in, in my world. I'm, I didn't say we're not going to lease. I just said, I'm going to wait and see where I'm at retail before I make that decision. Because frankly, I might have enough profit made, but I don't care if I see him for eight years. <laughs> it is, you know, where am I at in this deal at this point? Is that a 36 month lease that you're just calling 35? Yeah. First payments? Yeah. yeah. Did first, you do that on purpose? I did it on purpose, yeah. And yeah, we're, we're absorbing the first, first payment, and I, I, t I put about half of the cash on the lease that I was asking for in a retail deal if I want to steer the customer to a lease. If I want to steer the customer to a lease, if that's my plan, I'll put half the cash on the, on the lease that I had on the retail deal. Now, I can take that deal all the way up to MSRP even if I had negotiated way down on the, the retail side. And the reason I can legally do that is because I had not at any time negotiated those numbers. The moment you negotiate and scratch through anything on this side, you cannot take the lease back up in profit. Am I making good sense? But as long as I haven't scratched anything out there, we're only working on financial terms, I can come back with a 110% cap lease on an invoice retail deal. As long as that has not been discussed. Questions? Yes, sir. Whenever my salesman's in trouble, you know, most of the TOs in dealerships, most of the, a TO and in inter, customer introduction, are you a manager? No. Okay, what do you do? I just do internet stuff. Okay, that's good. Are you a manager? Yeah, I'm a dealer. Okay, yeah, very good. <laughs> but you can desk a deal. Sure. Yeah. What's your name? Debbie. Okay. I, know, I can remember that name. Yeah, I know you can. <laughs> yeah. His name back there. <laughs> I was. <laughs> You know, most of the TOs in your dealership. Hi, Debbie, it's Mr. and Mr. Jenkins. You want to say goodbye to them before they leave? Is that 90% of your TOs? The sales says, you want to say goodbye to these people before they leave? No, I'd like to say hello to them so they stay. <laughs> but, but you've already given them a brochure with a business card stapled to it, the deluxe getaway package, so I guess I better go talk to them. <laughs> Every dealership I go to, there's some idiot sitting there. I'm making be back packages. I intend to blow out that many people. <laughs> a business card stapled to a brochure. How weak is that? And it's weak management that watches them do it. Come up to my sales desk. Mr. Ziegler, I need a brochure. My God, we out of cars again. We had real ones out there a minute ago. You're going to show them a picture? <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> Would you, like, would you like me to desk deals in your store one day? <laughs> well, folks, I'll take one more. Questions? Discussions? Thank you for having me. I appreciate you.